Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the RTX 4080 versus the RTX 3080 in terms of mining. So we're gonna be kind of guessing where the performance will be on the 4080. We're gonna be basing it off of the memory it uses, how much cores it has, or the CUDA cores, looking at various other details and kind of get an idea of how fast this GPU will be on various coins such as uh, ETC, um, ETH W or ETH Proof of Work, also Ravencoin, Conflex, and so on. So if you think that's interesting, hit like, subscribe, at the bell, go to CryptoLLC.org. If you're looking to set up a GPU or ASIC mining farm, so we help clients all around the world set up their farms. So if you're interested in that, go to CryptoLLC.org. Right now is the best time to jump in. Prices are rock bottom. GPUs and ASICs, you can get GPUs for basically a third of the cost versus a year ago. You can get A6 at a third of the cost versus a year ago. So right now is the best time to jump in. Um, before we get started, Bitcoin saves your wealth and Jesus Christ saves your soul. All right, so our two comparisons here. Now, why are we comparing the 4080 versus the 3080? Why, why don't we pick the 3090 or the 4090? Why don't we pick the TI? The reason why we do this is because in terms of performance, in terms of how much money you're spending per card, it is more beneficial to spend the money on the 3080 because it's right in the middle of you get really good performance and the cards are not super expensive so 3080 um, if you take like a year ago two years ago 3080 was the best one you could get you get this one uh, this card because it's better than a 3070 the price is not that much more expensive than a 3070 you get good performance and, you know and so on so that's why we went to 3080s so also 3080s work out nicely when you build a rig of 12 cards and you want to plug them into a 20 amp circuit 3080 comes off really nicely in terms of 12 cards. Within, we don't touch 3090s because that's when you get into the realm of um, really expensive. No point of that. And uh, TI is even worse. So when we're comparing cards, we're comparing just the 3080 versus the 4080 and seeing what do we think or how much performance do we think the 4080 is going to come out at. So first of all, let's get our base numbers here. So the base numbers for 3080, uh, for those of you out there that mine on 3080s, you would know that the Ethereum um, mega hash was around 95, 99, 100, sometimes, you know, maybe 101. But if you want it to be really stable, it's basically around like 98 if you want it to have stable, especially if you're running hundreds of cards, thousands of cards, you want them stable. So it's about, you know, like 98, right? 95, 98, around there for 3080. So will it have, will 4080 perform better than a 3080. So let's take a look at, so let's first take a look at memory. GDDR6X, it's the newest memory, or was the newest memory 3080. It looks like there is no change for the 4080. We take a look at that. GDDR6X, same exact memory on the 4080. Um, the only thing that changed was we went from 10 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes. So how much of an impact will this have on Ethereum-based algorithms like ETC or ETHW? We think that the impact will basically be you know, around zero. Uh, I don't know what the speeds are for GDDR6X. I don't think there, that information has come out yet. We don't have like the mega hashes for the memory. You know, If they run faster, if the memory runs faster, if you can overclock them higher, then sure, there will be a small increase. Not much. We're thinking since this is the same exact memory type as a 3080. So technically this 4080 should perform exactly the same on Ethereum based algorithms. Um, again, if this was increased in mega hashes and the speed you're running it at, maybe the default speed is higher than the 3080, um, then that will have an impact. But again, that, that'll only be the impact of a overclock. So if you do not overclock a 3080, right? If you just grab one of these 3080s, you do not overclock it. Um, it runs at about what, like 85, 89. Then you overclock, it goes to 98 you know, 95. So you have like a 10% increase with the overclock. So technically, if this 4080s has the same exact memory and is overclocked or overclockable more, let's say by another 10%, then technically this 4080 should perform at about like 110 mega hashes on an Ethereum algorithm. So that's what we're predicting. Maybe, maybe at maximum a 10% increase on Ethereum-based algorithms. So for in terms of memory, not much of a upgrade. Now, let's take a look at other bits of information we have here. One of them is the core, the CUDA cores. There's a big increase in CUDA cores. We have 9728 on the 4080, 
we have 8704 on the 3080. Um, I threw that in a calculator and the CUDA core is 10% increase in CUDA cores. So we have a 10% or a little bit around there increase in CUDA cores, which is great. So we have 10% increase in CUDA cores. Uh, which algorithms use CUDA cores? Can't, I don't really know for sure which ones do. I know a lot of the uh, algorithms that are based more like on core, such as Conflux and Ravencoin, where it kind of uses a core and memory, core and memory. So those ones um, will take advantage of the CUDA cores, or they could take advantage of the CUDA cores. So again, we're, we're at 10% so far. So you might see like a 10% increase on those coins. Um, and basing it off our uh, 3080 performance on Ravencoin, we get 47.5 mega hashes on a Ravencoin on 3080. So you can kind of plug those numbers in at 10%, and that's probably what you're gonna get in a 4080, but that's just from the CUDA cores. Now let's take a look at more information here. Scroll down, one of the very, very big ones. Now let's take a look at the graphics processor. This is going to be the core. So the core is designed by NVIDIA, but the foundry is Samsung. So Samsung's the one that actually makes the core. NVIDIA sends information to Samsung, Samsung makes the core. The nanometers that Samsung was basing off the lithography on was eight nanometers. Then we'll go to the 40, 90 or 4080 actually, we uh, switched the foundry from Samsung to, to TSMC. TSMC is top of the line foundry in the world. No one makes better chips than TSMC. And we also dropped down to four nanometers. So we had a huge, huge, huge upgrade in nanometer, which means we have more density. We're going from eight nanometer to four. We're also switching from Samsung, a lower quality foundry to a more higher quality foundry at TSMC. Our transistors we can see here, Huge upgrade in transistor qual, uh, quantity from 28 million transistors on that core to 45.9 million transistors on the core. Die size actually shrank. You see this 628 millimeters square. That's the size of the core. We actually went down to 380. So we increased the transistors by almost doubling. Actually, have the percentages here. We, uh, transistor increase was 38%, actually not double, a little less than double, 38%. Um, transistor was increased, uh, how many transistors on the die, and the die actually became smaller. So there's a couple of uh, interesting nuances about that. First of all, because we have more transistors, meaning we have more data that can move through the core, so coins such as Conflux and Ravencoin will significantly have a great increase in performance. So we're predicting, judging by the percentages, um, we're predicting maybe about a 25% increase, maybe 20, 25% increase in Ravencoin, as well as Conflux. Again, the 3080 Ravencoin was doing 47.5, so if you add on 25%, it'll probably do like 59.3 uh, Ravencoin uh, performance. So that's pretty good, 3080, or uh, 3080 was 47.5, 3090 at 59.3, that's a good, solid performance increase. Now, here's one of the things you need to uh, keep an eye on. That's going to be the die size. So the die size was bigger on the 3080, became smaller on the 3090. Now, why is that something we need to keep an eye on? Well, there is less room for the heat to dissipate. On the 3080, since the die size was so large, you see that? Since it was so large, we had a bigger heat sink touching that whole die. And so you have more space for the heat to kind of penetrate and to come out of the die and go into the heat sink and then escape through the, uh, the heat sink and with the fans, all that stuff. So you technically, theoretically, would have an advantage with a bigger die size. Once we went over from 628 to 379, we went to a lot smaller die size and we increased the nanometers right, or we went down the nanometers, we got more transistors on a smaller die size. Um, I'm looking at that and this should be harder to control. You know, the, the heat on the core should be harder to control. It should be harder for the car to get rid of the heat. So um, we'll have to see how they work that out. Um, maybe the core can handle higher than 90 degrees Celsius. Maybe they increased that, who knows what they did, but we see that the core got 38% more transistors and decreased in the size. So 
we'll see. We'll have to kind of, uh, you know, buy a 4080 when it comes out and test it out and see how it handles the heat because this is a very, very interesting situation here. More transistors and less space. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and again, the increase is going to be around, we think, about 25%, maybe 20, 25% for Ravencoin conflicts and various other uh, core related algorithms or that use a core a lot. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at that memory a little bit closer. So memory, again, 16 gigs up from 10. Let's scroll down here. 10. Same exact memory type. Memory bus. The bandwidth actually went down. We're going down on the bus size. And that's probably most likely uh, has to do with the memory increase. Usually when you increase the memory from something like 10 gigs to 16 gigs, a lot of times they decrease the bandwidth um, a little bit to kind of compensate. I don't know if it's, it probably has something to do with their architecture. They needed probably to decrease it a little bit to handle um, six gigs more memory than on a 3080. That's probably what happened. Um, now let's talk about clock speeds. So clock speeds, again, this will have an impa impact on Ravencoin, Conflux, various other core related coins. So clock speeds on a 3080 base clock, 1440, boost clock, 1710, and memory clock right there. Actually, uh, so actually we do have a confirmation. I must have skipped this when I was looking over it. But uh, we do have a confirmation on that memory. The memory is a little bit faster on the 4080. Not much though. And again, this is only really going to kind of uh, help you out once you get into the overclocking a lot more than like uh, basing it off a of 3080. So we do have that increase. So uh, I guess I would probably confirm that um, the 4080 would most likely have about 10 to 20% increase in Ethereum related algorithms. Um, but so far as it looks, it looks like it's gonna have more impact on the core than on memory. Memory is probably 10, 20%, core is probably 20, 30% increase. Anyway, back to the core clocks. So base clock, boost clock, 14, 40, 17, 10, base clock, 2205 and 2505. So this is great news for core related algorithms. Not only are you getting more transistors because the nanometers went down, you're getting more transistors, the die size is less, you're actually running it faster. So all of those give you a good, you know, solid uh, expectation of about 20 to 30% increase in core related uh, coins. But again, this die size, very, very scary. You know, basically buy a couple of these and test it out because that does not look good. Who knows, they might've figured it out how to handle all that heat. All right, then, oh, TDP. So let's go back up here. Where is our TDP? Let's search for it. TDP, all right. So TDP, just wanna show you guys, here it is, board design. TDP is exactly the same for both these cards. It's 320, so that means that once this card is 100% loaded, let's take the 4080 card. Once it's 100% loaded, it's running 20% faster, 30% faster than a 3080, the watts will stay the same. That's very, very important because if the card increased in speed, that's good. But if your watts increased with the speed, then you didn't really improve anything. You basically just have a faster card that uses more watts. You know, So there's no real benefit of that because you're going off of a lot of times you're going off of uh, the efficiency rate, you know, how fast is it mining Ravencoin at what wattage, right? So the fact that we're getting this nice boost in performance, 20, 30%, and our TDP is 320, exactly as a 3080, so we can confirm that you are actually getting 20, 30% faster uh, graphics card compared to a 3080 with the same power draw. So that's, that's a good solid upgrade. So this is about 30% increase, that's great. In terms of uh, pretty much all specs here, all specs point to that. All right, in conclusion, we went through all these details, memory, core, CUDA cores, clock speeds, give you guys an idea of about 20, 30% increase in the 4080. So what do you do? Do you buy a 3080 or do you buy a 4080? So our recommendation is all tied to the price. What is the price of a 3080? Are you getting them used? Because right now there's gonna be so many used cards out there. Great opportunity to jump in. You, you know, you, obviously you'll have some dead ones come. You might have a, you know, an issue of returning them and all that stuff. But if you're getting them at half the price of MSRP, if you're getting 3080s used at $300, $400, it's worth it, right? MSRP on these 4080s is gonna be 
top dollar. No one's going to lower the price on those. There's going to be all basically zero used 4080s. All of them are going to be brand new. You can't get thousands of them for the next one or two months. So even if you wanted to get a thousand, it could be in a month or two. And on top of that, it would be straight MSRP price, no discount. So again, all depends how much can you get 3080s, how much can you get the 4080s. Obviously the 4080s is a better buy in terms of performance, but at what price? So most likely for the next six months, we would recommend our investors to buy the 3080s. Do not buy the 4080s if you can get a good price on 3080s. So that's going to be our recommendation. Again, uh, do your own research, you know, and uh, make sure you guys, you know, don't just go jumping online and just buying 4080s just because they're 20, 30 percent faster. If the 3080 is three times less expensive, you can technically get three of these cards for the price of one of these. It obviously makes more sense. But that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys like it. Hit like, subscribe at the bell. Go to CryptoLLC.org. If you want us to set you up a GPU or ASIC mining farm, we start from scratch. We can set you up an ASIC farm all the way from the very beginning. Just property. You start off by buying, buying property, buying the transformer, buying the gear, buying everything that's needed to have electricity there. We can get all of that done in about three months. You'll have a mining operation set up and ready to roll. So it's not years out. It's more like three months out. So make sure you guys check out CryptoLLC.org. That's going to be it for this one. Until next time. Bye.